Good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to the regular scheduled City Council meeting of December 7th, 2022. Let the record show that all councillors are present. Meeting call to order. First order of business, adds and deletes. Add department and committee reports, item 5B. Add bids and quotes, item 4A. Next, I'll need a motion and a second for approval of the agenda. So moved. A motion by Councillor Bayless. Support. Support by Councillor Faso. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Next up is uh, the Truth and Taxation public hearing. Before I open the public hearing, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Mrs. Molnar, um, and then she'll, from there, then we'll open up the public hearing. Good evening. Welcome to the Truth and Taxation presentation at our public hearing on December 7th. 2022 at six o'clock. So the agenda for this presentation is gonna cover the purpose of the Truth and Taxation public hearing, the Property Taxation 101, how do we compare to other cities, where does my tax dollar go, we're gonna cover the general fund budget and levy, we're gonna cover the other governmental fund budgets and levies, the enterprise fund budgets, we're gonna have some resources for property tax relief, and then we will open the public hearing for questions and comments. So first up is the purpose of the Truth and Taxation hearing. Um, the legislation was enacted in 1988 to enhance participation in Minnesota's property tax system, to educate the public on how property taxes are determined, encourage public to understand the local government's budget process, and encourage public to become involved in helping local officials set spending priorities. And the next page is a chart of how the property tax cycle works. Um, so currently we're in December on the top right. This is where we're having our TNT meeting to discuss the proposed budget and the tax levy. By the end of December, the city has to set our final levy and then that levy will be certified over next year's taxes. The preliminary levy was set in September. Then in March, the county auditor will send property tax statements based on the valuation notices that were received this year. Around March or April, that is when the valuation for the next year's taxes are sent out by the assessor's office. Once you receive that notice, you can talk to the assessor about your valuation received on that notice. The tax court petitions must be filed by the end of April if you want to appeal valuation for your taxes that would be payable in the current year. Then in April, May, there'll be the local board of appeal and equalization that'll convene. Then in um, May, except for there's a few tax classifications and the rest of them will pay their first half of real property taxes, which are due on May 15th. June, the County Board of Appeal and Equalization will convene. Around that time is when the city will begin working on the next year's budget. And then we work on our budget process through the remainder of the year until we set the final levy at the end of December or by the end of December. And then in September, by September 30th, we have to set our preliminary levy for the following year. This levy will be the amount that was reflected in the statements you just received in November. Um, that is not the final levy. We just can't go higher than that levy amount. Then in October, unless part of the parcel is classified as agricult agricultural land, then the last day to pay your second half of real estate taxes for the year would be October 15th. November is when the proposed tax notices are sent out for the following year using the preliminary levy that we set at the end of September. Um, and it uses the valuation notices that were sent out in the spring. So a little bit on values and classification. Valuation notices are sent in March, April, and they, or April, and they include the estimated market value to be assessed to the next tax year. Homestead exclusion, the maximum exclusion you can have for a home would be valued at $76,000. That would be an exclusion of $30,400. As value increases, your exclusion begins to phase out. Once your value reaches $413,800, you wouldn't have an exclusion anymore. Property classification, that determines your class tax rate. Um, residential homesteads tax rate is 1% for the first $500,000 in value. And then after $500,000 in value, it increases to 1.25%. Then the next part is a formula um, that figures out your tax capacity. So that is your taxable market value times your class rate. That equals your home's tax capacity. And then the city's total levy um, 
divided by the total tax capacity. The, the levy and the total tax capacity for all properties are used to calculate the local tax rate for the cities. Here's an example of your proposed tax statement. Um, so this statement was just sent out in November. Um, it excludes any special assessments that you may have. The statement shows the homeowner what the tax bill would be for the following year using each taxing jurisdiction's preliminary budgets. This would be an example of evaluation notice. This would have been sent out around March or April of this year. Um, this is when you can appeal or question your classification or your valuation. Then the county auditor's office will send out your property tax statement in March. This would be for taxes payable in the current year. It would be using the, the value that the assessor had sent out in March or April. And then your taxes are due the first half due May 15th and the second half due October 15th. This statement will include taxes for the county, school district, the city, special taxing districts, possibly voter approved levies, and possibly will have special assessments all compiled into one total tax bill for the residents. Um, here's a little bit on this slide about fiscal disparities. Fiscal disparities um, is where local government units contribute a portion of the growth in their commercial, industrial, and public utility property to a tax base sharing pool. Each community receives a distribution of property value from the pool based on the market value and population of each city. The contribution, the contribution to the pool is 40% of the growth in commercial, industrial, and public utility value since the base year, which was 1995. For 2023, Hibbing's distribution is decreasing by $332,120. There was a large increase for 2022, followed by a large decrease for 2023. The commercial classification of short-term rental properties over the past few years may be playing a role in the drop of the fiscal disparities distributions. Um, so the next slide is a table of the example of that drop. So in 2022, it's, I know it's kind of small, but in 2022, um, we received $1,836,062 in fiscal disparities. For 2023, we will only be receiving $1,503,941. On the next slide, it's got some pie charts that shows Hibbing's net tax capacity for the last couple of years. Um, payable 2021, our net tax capacity for the whole city was $7,882,926. For 2022, for this year, our net tax capacity was $8,217,957. Then in the pie charts, you'll see how the split is, is um, spread out between agricultural, other residential, other share, the homestead share, and then the commercial industrial chair. So the lighter green, the bigger portion, the biggest portion of the pie is the homestead share. Um, so you can see that the city of Hibbing, the homestead properties are paying the biggest chunk of the pie. On the next slide is how we compare in the tax base composition to other cities. So you can see that Hibbing, we have the 4.63 agricultural, 59.61 homestead, 5.57 other residential, 24.2 commercial, 5.99 other, and then our total net tax capacity of 8,217,000. Um, we are on the higher end for the homestead share, I guess, compared to other cities in our area um, and lower in the commercial share than other cities in our area. So that is contributing to part of who is paying for what part of the tax bill. On the next slide is how we compare in city tax rates. Um, so the tax rate is calculated by taking the levy divided by the city's total tax capacity. So in Hibbing, you'll see that in 2021, our tax rate was 93.92%. Um, compared to Grand Rapids, which is 84.22, Virginia, 136%, Chisholm, 96.4%. So that would be for the city tax rate, not counting the county, school district, and the other taxing jurisdictions. So then we'll talk a little bit about where does your tax dollar go and what we use it for in our budget. So you have your taxes by jurisdiction. So like I said, in March, you get that tax statement that's got your city taxes, school district, and county taxes. So this is a pie chart that shows what percentage goes to the different jurisdictions. So a little over half of it goes to the city of Hibbing's tax levy. 
Um, and then you'll see 32% is county, 1% special taxing districts, and then 16% for Hibbing would go to ISD 701. And then here's just a um, bar graph of the city tax levy history. So you'll see over time the budget has increased um, to cover increasing costs. And you'll see that the general fund, that is the bar graph, that's the bottom of the bar graph, that's the biggest portion of the city's budget. We'll talk about it on the next slide. But we have the general fund levy, the capital <laughs> levy, permanent improvements levy, HEDA, library, um, debt service, other post-employment benefits, and then a small tax abatement levy. So now we'll talk a little bit about the general fund. So the general fund is the largest operating fund of the city. When local government aid, Tacodite municipal aid, our charges for services and other miscellaneous revenues aren't enough to cover our anticipated operating expenditures, the city certifies a levy to cover the difference and balance the budget. The proposed general fund levy for 2023 is 6,543,296 which is an increase of 1.8% from the 2022's general fund levy of $6,427,759. So what are the reasons for the increase? Um, on the revenue side, the largest revenue aside from the levy is our local government aid. That is $8,360,051 of our budget. The LGA or local government aid has not increased at the same rate as inflation. Therefore, the levy must make up the difference. Building permit fees, user group fees, golf course fees, cemetery and ambulance fees were all increased, which has raised the 2023 budgeted revenues. The tax and aid and production taxes have been stable. On the expenditure side, we have four collective bargaining agreements that were up for negotiation at the end of 2022. And the city has been working on moving to a comparable worth pay structure Unions that have settled so far, we have a 2.75% pay increase for 2023, and we're moving to a stepped or laddered pay structure. Um, insurance increased 9.5% for active employees. Inflation has also impacted our budgets. The CPI over the year ended October 2022 is up 7.7%. Utility rates have also increased 5%. So on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about levy coverage on what you're paying for. Um, so if it's got all the different functions of government and then the different levies, for, which makes up the total of the $9,542,886 levy. About 800,000 is general government, just under one and a half million is covering public works, a little over a million for other functions of government. Police, one, just under 1.6 million. The fire and ambulance is a little under 800,000. The Department of City Services is Eight, about 850,000. Then you have your HEDA levy, which has been stable at 105,177. The library, that's the state mandated minimum levy of $586,043. Debt service of $362,500. That covers our principal and interest on our debt. Permanent improvements, um, or OPEB, that is actually for um, other post employment benefits for retirees' health insurance that have worked for the city and that pays for their insurance after they retire. That's 400,000. Permanent improvements of 778,870. And then the tax abatement levy is 75,000. Capital fund is 692,000. So on the next slide, we'll show a pie, a pie chart of where does each tax dollar levied for the general fund, um, where does the amount of each dollar go? So the general government, 12 cents of every, of every dollar would go towards general government. 22 cents of every dollar would go towards public works. 16 cents for other functions such as transit, the cemetery, unallocated general insurance. Police, 25 cents of every dollar. Fire, ambulance would be 12 cents of every dollar. Um, and then city services would be 13 cents of every dollar. On the next slide, we'll talk about the library fund levy. Um, so the library fund is the special revenue fund of the city. It tracks revenues and expenditures of the Hibbing Public Library. The state mandated levy from the Minnesota Department of Education is $586,043, and this remains unchanged for 2023. This amount isn't enough to sustain the library's operations, so the general fund budgets a transfer to the library to fund the deficit. 2023's amount of the transfer is $247,844. 
The budgeted transfer is up 4% from 2022 to cover budgeted pay increases, the insurance increase of 9.5%, and then the increase in cost of supplies. The HEDA fund levy um, that is established, the city established the Hibbing Economic Development Authority, and they did that through an enabling resolution per Minnesota statute 469.091. The HEDA levy has remained unchanged at 105.177 for many years. The city may levy taxes in any year for the benefit of the authority in an amount not more than 0.01813% of estimated market value. We have our capital fund levy to pay for infrastructure and equipment. Um, we, it's for anything that has lasting value, that's infrastructure and equipment. The levy increased from 441,732 in 2022 to 692,000 in 2023. Aging equipment and infrastructure, as well as inflation and procurement challenges have attributed to this increase. Items that we have in the 2023 capital budget include city hall building improvements, a Greensmore and utility cart, a new ambulance, a new squad car for our police department. We're working on a parks master plan, um, new software for our, our IT, MindView project that we've been working on, and then a Cary Lake campground project. The next levy I'll talk about is the Permanent Improvements Fund levy. Um, that increased from 540,000 in 2022 to 778,870 in 2023. Um, we're seeing prices increase of bituminous. We're doing a Rainy Road Bridge project, which is planned to be completed in 2023. Minnesota State Aid Bridge Bond Funds will pay for a majority of the project. The city has to cover the approaches leading up to the bridge. The city is budgeting a total of $1,861,500 in street paving projects, of which nearly 1.4 million of that is covered with Minnesota State Aid funding. Then we have our debt service levy. Sometimes the city needs to finance equipment or projects with debt and then pay the debt back over time. The debt service levy provides the funding needing to pay back the annual principal and interest payments on the debt. Hibbing's debt service levy has decreased from 422,197 in 2022 to 362,500 in 2023 because a 10 year equipment certificate was paid off in 2022. And this decrease is 14% over the prior year. The other levies that we have would be the tax abatement levy. Uh, we use that for economic development incentives over a contracted period of time. And then the post employment benefit levy to cover a retiree insurance. So the overall proposed levy increase for 2023 is an increase of 5.95% from $9,007,268 to $9,542,886. It's a levy increase of $535,618. If, if, if all of the market values in Hibbing didn't change their value and every classification was the same and the fiscal disparities reduction of $332,000 didn't happen, then this would cost a homeowner with a house valued at $100,000 about $50. Um, we know there's a lot of other changes that impact taxes other than that, like valuation changes, classification changes, and, and everything else that goes into the tax bill. Um, so due to the, risk, the reduction in fiscal disparities, allocations, and market value increases, and some taxpayers will see a larger increase to their share of city taxes for 2023. So on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about enterprise funds. The sewer fund and sanitation fund are budgeted enterprise funds. These funds are business type activities that aren't part of the levy. The services provided in these funds are paid for with utility rates set to cover operating and capital costs. A sewer rate increase of 1% is budgeted for February 1st of 2023 according to a sewer rate study prepared by a consultant, which was Baker Tilly in 2021. Budgeted operating expenditures for sewer fund increased 161,796 or 8.8% 8 .8 for 2023. Budgeted operating expenditures for sanitation fund increased $141,022 or 6.1% 6 .1 for 2023. Contributing factors of the operating increases are inflation, personnel costs, and an increase in insurance. A zero to 3% increase in operating costs was built into the study based on historical data. Inflation has led to increases much higher than the 3%. An updated rate study may be required in 2023 due to market conditions. So on the next slide is just got some resources available for property tax relief through the Minnesota Department of Revenue. 
Um, if anybody wants to look at that, there's things such as property tax refunds, um, a deferral program for senior citizens, and then some other property tax programs. Um, and then there is packets up here that have these slides if anybody would like to take one with them. Um, so for any questions or comments, if you wanna talk to myself or the city council in our public hearing about the city's levy or budget, um, the mayor will be opening the public hearing soon. If you have any questions about your classification or the assessed value on your tax statement, um, Rodella Lafreniere from the St. Louis County Assessor's Office is here and she can take you, take you aside and talk to you about your, your tax statement's valuation. Thanks, Sheena, and yeah. thank you and all, all your staff and everybody involved with working on uh, city levy and budget. So I want to thank you, you and your staff. Right, I'll take and thank you too, Rodella, for being here because of, most of the people are probably coming to see you. So, <laughs> but thank you for being here. Too. <coughs> um, Okay, now at this time, like, I, like uh, Sheena said, she'll be here to answer questions or tomorrow and Rodell is here if, you're, if your tax statement and your property value, she'll answer your questions or be able to set up appointment with you tomorrow, um, whatever works for you. But at this time, I'm gonna open up the public hearing for the Truth and, Act, ta Truth and Taxation public hearing. The purpose of the Truth and Taxation public hearing is to discuss the city's 2022 proposed levy and 2023 city budget. So at this time, I will open up the public hearing. Uh, you can come to the podium if you want to speak, uh, state your name and address. Um, one more time. Um, second time I open it up. Okay, we have one person, just state your name. I know who you are, but state your name for the record. <laughs> so. My name is Jeffrey Stokes. I live at 11688 Riverview Drive in Hibbing, Minnesota. Um, I understand that I can talk to the council. I just want to know how much influence does the council have on setting price values in the city of Hibbing? And how, how, do they, how can they affect that? Um, that one I will turn over to. Actually, we don't do this anymore. That's the county. So... They would have to answer that question for you, Jeff, and you can talk to her, Sheena. Um, you could, she could talk to you about that afterwards on that because the county is the one that does the assessing of the property, so. Okay, that's another question I have. When did we get rid of the city assessor? Oh, Do you know what year it was roughly? 2011, I think it was, no, or 2016, 16, 17, was it? 16, uh, okay, and then I, I just I want to know where to go to answer these questions. There are people in this town that are paying zero taxes on their house, and I'd like to know why. That one I cannot answer. That one you'd have to talk to the county uh, because they do all the assessing there, Jeff. Okay. Um, and I then wish I, that was my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Find out about that one. See. Um, when you find out, let me give me that answer. Uh -huh, I will tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm also wondering why this meeting was set at the same time as the as school tax meeting, because I think that's unfair that we can't attend either one. That one, I think, is state law. I don't know for sure. I'm not going to question. I, I'm not the legal on that. But I know this is, we do have our meetings. We moved our meetings till 5 o'clock, but we have to have this one at 6. So okay. that one is a law, I'm pretty sure, I don't know. <laughs> all right, so I guess all my questions will be addressed to the to the county then. Okay. After and that or the like assessor. I said, but you can talk to her now or set up appointment with, you know, whatever, so. But that's you've been why busy, I put in a phone calls to you, but you haven't returned my calls, <laughs> so I, I, under, I understand. Okay, that's all the questions I got would, would address to them. Thank you very okay. much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, anybody else that wants to address the public hearing on this? Mayor, councilors, uh, good evening. My name is Jeff Sergeard. I was here a year ago, maybe some of you remember. I was up here standing approximately the same time. Um, I'm here tonight because my taxes and what I paid the last few years, they increase. My taxes are proposed to increase up to $6,274. And last year it was an increase of 822, now it's another $300. Um, I guess what my concerns are is I live on a gravel road, I have no city water, I have no city sewer, 
no street lights, no sidewalks, and I only have 10 acres, and I live in a rural area. And I guess what I'm asking is, is I'm not complaining about the value of my place. I have a three bedroom home, attached garage with an extra garage. And for that amount of money, what I'm paying, I just feel that's very high for the services I have. And I do appreciate the police, the fire, the grading I get in the snow plowing, but with some of that stuff I don't get versus the people that live right in the town, I feel my value of my taxes should be lower for the value of my place that I'm paying for now. And that's why I met last, yesterday, last year after with Rodell and, and we talked about this. And I guess I'm asking the city to look at this and see, I had two counselors call me right after my presentation last year, but nothing was ever followed up afterwards. And I guess what I'm asking is I feel the city should look at this to make it fair for some of the people that don't have some of the services or facilities or whatever you want to call it for the rural area. Where I live is down to 92 Spudville Road on a dead end road, Eliason Road. And I just, I want to pay, I'm not afraid to pay taxes. I just want to have it fair is all I'm asking. And I'm just hoping that sometime in the future we can look at this. I'm more than open to be on a committee to help out. And, and I just, that's all I'm asking tonight is just let's make it fair. So people want to build here, want to move here and live in this town and have a good future for this town. And that's what I'm asking for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody else want to address the council? Uh, my name is Jerry Sepoff. Live on the Highway 37 all my life. Uh, I've been a, I'm a retired contractor. And I'm going to do something a little different than the rest of the people. I'm, all I'm going to say is my taxes are too high. They've gone up just like this person before me. They've increased too much. Now, I'm going to give the city council a challenge. Because I have a contractor, I've hired a lot of people. People have come to me and asked, how do you get your people to work so hard? I treat them right. I pay them right. We all go home happy. But going to this, I'm watching different things, lived here all my life. One thing, for instance, the airport. How many people work at the airport now? In the 50s, now I know this goes back to quite a few years, one person was the airport manager. He also plowed the snow. The airport never had a delay on, on aircraft. Now there must be 30 people working out there. We've got a massive building. We've got all of this in Hibbing. I love Hibbing, but when a person from Cleveland Cliff said we're going to shut the doors, we only got four years of iron ore left. I'm thinking ahead. Where are the taxes going to come from now? Okay. I have watched different crews, and I'm talking about the work for the city, the water and light, and everything. I could fire almost every one of them. There are some good people, but I, if you work for a dollar, you deserve it, you get a dollar. But the old joke goes, why are these four guys leaning one against one another? Because the foreman forgot to bring the shovel. I'm tired of seeing lazy people collecting money when I've worked hard all my life to get what I get, and I got to pay higher taxes, higher taxes. When the people that are moving into town aren't paying anything but collecting. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak? Please go to the podium, state your name and address. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Keith Stahlberger. I live on 3114 Anderson Road. Uh, 
our taxes have been going up quite high. Uh, looking at the city, uh, the city of Hibbing used to be a great town. Right now, there's hardly any business. If you didn't have a, a Walmart, Super One, LM Supply, you have nothing here no more. And you've got to get, attract business to get people here, people build homes, fix their homes, they pay taxes. I'm paying way too much in taxes being in a country. I have no services, no water, sewer. I just put, <coughs> excuse me, $17,000 mound system in last year. Uh, I get my road plowed. I do have a tar road, but not all that money comes out of the city taxes either. But there's, there's nothing for me. My share of the city's taxes went up $500 proposed for next year. What have I got for that? There's nothing. Why do I even come to this town? It, it, it's getting terrible. You people got to do something here. We just can't keep paying. I'm 74 years old. How can I keep paying these taxes? My taxes are $4,800. There's nothing for me here. All these people are here for a reason. It's got to be a fair share someplace. It's not. And I do see on the back side of my statement here, it says culture and recreation. If you're thinking about building a new memorial building here in town, why don't you put up the vote to these people here? That's going up $3 million. Is that quite stupid here, I think? You're not attracting any people. People playing hockey and stuff don't even play hockey. Here they go over to Chisholm because it's too high to cost too much money to play hockey here. Why do you want to add on to the memorial building? It's not right. You're not going to attract any more people in this town. You've got a hotel there. It's been supposed to start up in February. It hasn't even started up yet. You've got no place for people to stay. Your restaurants, whatever, there's not enough business here. You've got to do something. You've got to think fast. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience would like to step, state your name and address? Hi. My name is Craig Barron. Uh, I've never been to a meeting before. This is the first time ever. Um, I've never complained about taxes. Um, taxes are just inevitable. Um, it's interesting to hear what everyone's saying. Um, what caught my attention this year is my property taxes went up another $2,000, okay? To what I pay the city of Hibbing in taxes is five grand for my house in town. I look at my house, I look at the value of my house. Someone said they weren't too concerned about their evaluation you know, of the house. And, and I, I'm not really, not, I don't really have anything to say about that, but as far as like, if you look at comparatively like a, a property in, you could have the same assessed value and let's just look at Chisholm, okay? $200,000 house in Chisholm, $200,000 house in Hibbing, significantly less money. Um, uh, I've got a brother who lives in Elk River. His property is probably worth $250,000 more than mine, and he's paying less taxes than I am by about 2,000 bucks. This is, what I'm saying is it's like, I get it, you guys don't have the businesses to help fund you know, your budget, but what, what I think is happening is <laughs> this is gonna hurt people's property values. When I look at my taxes, like if I was gonna sell my house, I wouldn't buy my house. You know, if I saw that I have to pay $9,000 in property taxes, that's just, it's amazing. You know, $9,000, I mean, you know, I got a friend down in the city's $1.4 million house, he's paying 10 grand. My house is not worth even close to that. I could stick mine inside of his. Again, this is, you guys gotta, <laughs> you, you can't just keep doing the same thing. Something's got to change here. 
Um, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because I think everybody else here pays their taxes and you're probably all thinking the same thing. But it is, it's alarming. And um, as, as far as like how you guys figure out the taxes, I don't know exactly if you have to cut some services. I don't know exactly what you guys have to do, but it is getting out of hand. And uh, it's, you know, I mean, if, if I was selling real estate and somebody new to the area came and they're looking for a house, say, hey, you know, I just want the best bang for the buck, right? I, I couldn't tell them move to Hibbing. Mm -hmm. I would say, well, go to Nashwalk, go to, I know people in, in the Nashwalk area, my gosh, they're, they pay 600 bucks for a $400,000 house. $600 goes to the city of Nashwalk versus in Hibbing, it's four grand. So I don't know, I guess that's, I don't think there's anything else I have to say, but I do appreciate what you guys do, I do. But I, I, and I, I would like to be part of the solution as well, like to try to figure out, you know, you know, what we can do. Because I would look at the city Hibbing like a business. I'm a business owner and it's like, I want people to come to Hibbing. I want people to live in Hibbing. But when you have this going on, when these taxes are like this, people are not gonna come to Hibbing. They're gonna go somewhere else. And it's just, it's just normal. I've asked my friends, I said, hey, would you buy my house? No way. I would never pay that taxes. You know, nine grand? That's a ton. So anyway, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. <clears throat> Anybody else want to speak? Here, I'll state your name and your address, please. <clears throat> My name is Kristen Grace, and I live at 11672 River View Drive in Hibbing. I bought my home in March of this year, and it's not my first home, but I was hoping it would be my last, and I could stay here for the rest of my life. Um, what concerned me when I saw the statement was there's a 4.4% change for St. Louis County, a 10.9% for the city, and 8.9% for the school, the school district of 701. That's a lot. And I saw that the city of Duluth this week took a pencil to their property taxes. And um, I think it's important that we take a look, a little bit harder look. People are getting hit by gas prices, eating, inflation, and this, whatever this market was with homes. I know I paid an inflated rate for my home, but I took the gamble because I, I knew even if it decreased a little bit, I was still going to be okay financially. But everything keeps going up. And we have to work harder at being responsible stewards. I want to thank you for your service. I think being here at this time of night, I'm usually in my jammies at home in bed. I really appreciate what you're doing. And I really love the lights outside. But I wrote a letter to Spencer Igo, who is our new elected representative. He did try and fix a little bit by proposing something, but it got shot down. I would like to read that to you, but I don't feel like I can disclose my email. But there are ways for us to reach out and do different things. And I'm just asking you to please put a pencil to this. I think it can be done. We can, 10, 10%, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. And I know things are necessary, but what's not necessary? Where can we shave some of that off? just till everybody gets through this very high inflationary period.
tough times for people. And I guess that's it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else want to speak? Seeing none, at this time, I'm going to close the public hearing. Okay, next up, um, and like I said, um, I know everybody's got a concern. All of us up here, I know all our, my taxes went up, everybody's went up up here, so I, I can't say, I'd like to find out where the people are paying zero because that's what I would like to do too, so I, but uh, like I said, we try our best and our finance and everybody else does, so. Okay, next up, uh, public hearing is closed at this time. Next up is the 2023 city budget slash 2022 final levy item run resolution number 22-12-01 final 2023 city budget and 2022 levy. <clears throat> Wish of the council. Make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Councillor Faso. Support. Support by Councillor Whitney. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Okay, next up, um, we're gonna go into closed session pursuant to attorney-client privilege for potential litigation pursuant to Minnesota 13D.01 subdivision dot 3B. Um, so at this time, I'll need a motion and a second for a recess. So we'll go in, we have a motion by Councilor Harkonnen. Support. Support by Councillor Bayless. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. At this time, I'd like to resume the regular city council meeting on Wednesday, December 7, 2022. Next up, approval of minutes. Approve the minutes of the regular Hibbing City Council meeting on November 16, 2022. Wish to the council. Motion approved. Motion by Councillor Harkonnen. Support. Support by Councillor Bayless. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Approve the minutes of the Hibbing City Council workshop meeting on November 16, 2022. Wish to the council. Motion to approve. Motion by Councillor Faso. Second. Supported by Councillor Whitney. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion Next carried. up, cons consent agenda. Item one, approve accounts payable dated 11-28-2022, check 17 through 17 in the amount of $303,539.57. 12-1-2022, check 173537 through 173633 in the amount of $661,998.56. Item two, approve city payroll for pay period ending 11-18-2022. Check 16-8539 through 16-8602 in the amount of $539,626.14. Item three, acknowledge the retirement of Gary Hooper, City Services Lead Maintenance Worker, effective 1 7, 2023. Item four, authorize the hire of Jeffrey Lang in the position of full time lead maintenance person with City Services. Item five, authorize the hire of Samara Lauer in the position of seasonal rink attendant with City Services. Item six, authorize the hire of Hannah Main in the position of seasonal rink attendant with City Services. Item seven, authorize the Hibbing City Council to attend the Hibbing Shelter Information Session in the Hibbing Memorial Building Dining Room on Monday, December 12, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. Item eight, authorize the Hibbing City Council to attend the North St. Louis County Soil and Water Conservation District Board Supervisors and Staff Open House for elected officials on Tuesday, December 20th, 2022 at 503 3rd Street North, Suite A, Virginia, Minnesota from 1 to 4 p.m. Item nine, set the next regular meeting for Wednesday, December 21st, 2022 at 5 p.m. in the Hibbing City Hall Council Chambers. Item 10, set the next regular, or set the next city council workshop for Wednesday, December 21st, 2022, following the regular meeting in the Hibbing City Hall Council Chambers. Wishes of the council. 
Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read and published. We have a motion by Councillor Hoffman Sackerman. Support. Support by Councillor Faso. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. <laughs> motion carried. Next up, we have City city Engineer, Mr. Story, item A. Uh, Mayor Council, um, attached is resolution 22-12-02 and a local bridge replacement program grant agreement. Uh, this is for the Dixon Road bridge removal. The grant is in the amount of $135,026, and I'm asking that the council approves the grant agreement and the resolution for the required signatures. Okay, wishes the council. Motion to approve. We have a motion by Councillor Faso. Support. Support by Councillor... I'll take it. <laughs> Bayless. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, say. Motion carried. <laughs> Item B. Uh, Mayor Council, attached is a program from Lake Country Power for the Interruptible, interruptible Commercial Industrial, industrial Generator Program. So what this does is during high demand times at the plant, they can turn our generator off and our generator will supply power to our plant. Um, we installed it when we did the Mercury program um, a while back, it's a megawatt generator. Uh, currently this year, we're up to $79,505 in savings. We should be around $100,000 in savings on our electric bill by the end of the year. And I'm asking council for the approval to sign the agreement. Okay, wishes of council. Motion approved. Motion by Councilor Schreiber. Support. Support by Councilor Hoffman Sackerman. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. Uh, next up, item two under Police Department. I'll turn it over to Mr. Brzezinski. Mr. Mayor, City Council, thank you. So, item um, 2A authorizing covering $40,000 from the parking ticket revenue from 2022 to be used for the purchase of a squad car in 2023. Um, remember, during our budget building, we had uh, budgeted one squad car to be purchased. We challenged our PD to come up with unique and clever ways to fund um, uh, another squad car. This is what Steve and his um, team came up with. So. I can answer questions, otherwise um, consideration would be appreciated. Okay, wish of the council. Motion approved. Uh, motion by Councillor Harkin. Second. Support by <laughs> Councillor Faso. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Item B, Greg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Item 2B, um, I would offer up resolution number 22-12-03 accepting the donation on behalf of the Owens Pasavento Dr. Benjamin P. Owens Family Foundation of Hibbing in the amount of $2,500 for the Active Shooter Response Initiative Instructor Training Program. Okay, we should have called some. Motion to approve. Motion by Councillor Bayless. Support. Support by Councillor Schreiber. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Mayor, I will abstain. And one abstain. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Next up, item three, City Service Director, Mr. Arola, item A. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, first in your packet tonight is uh, operation agreement with the uh, Hibbing Tourist uh, Senior Citizen Center for the operation of uh, Mindview. This is a revised um, draft from one that you guys had previously adopted, I believe maybe last year. But um, since sending that one off to our state bonding agent, they had some changes they wanted to see and uh, a checklist for us to, to go through and make sure we had everything in there. But this is a revised copy and um, yeah, looking for your approval to move forward with that and get that back to the, uh, the bonding agent so we can get moving on our dollars. Okay, we should the council. Motion approved. Motion by Councilor Schreiberger. Support. Support by Councilor Bayless. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Item B. Uh, number two here is a resolution <laughs> accepting the donation from uh, Hibbing Taconite in the amount of $1,500 to be used towards the repainting of the uh, display truck up at Mindview. We did not get to that this fall. It is on the agenda for right away next spring. And then we also have donations from uh, Domex and uh, Pro Blast are doing the, the labor 
and then the uh, $1,500 would go towards the materials. So, uh, okay. looking for your approval to accept that donation. Okay, wishes of council. Motion to approve. Motion by Councilor Harkonnen. Support. Support by Councilor Hoffman Sackerman. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Item C. Uh, third thing here is resolution 221205, accepting uh, grant monies from St. Louis County Trails Task Force uh, for $10,000 to be used towards our parks master plan. Um, and we are going to start interviews on our master plan here next week. So we're getting that uh, process going and, and hopefully have somebody selected by January. Okay. Wish of the council. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to approve. Motion by Councilor Hoffman Sackerman. Support. Support by Councilor Faso. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Thanks, Nick. You. Next up, item four under senior executive assistant, Mrs. Seppala, item A. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm going to bring two resolutions before you, and the first one is to offer resolution number 22-12-06, accepting the donation on behalf of the Owens Pasavento Dr. Benjamin P. Owens Family Foundation of Hibbing Foundation in the amount of $1,500 um, in support of purchasing pumpkins for the Trick, Treat, and Greet 2022 event at Hibbing City Hall. It was such a huge success, and I really want to thank um, the foundation. Um, we had over 2,800 people who attended, and just that amount of money to help us with the pumpkins was a great thing to give to the kids. So okay. just wondering if you would uh, offer that resolution. Okay. Wish of the council. Motion to approve. Motion by Councilor Faso. Support. Support by Councilor Schreiber. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried with one abstain. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I got you on that you one. Got, yes, you got Okay. Uh, item B. Item B is to offer resolution number 22-12-07, accepting the donation on behalf of the Owens Pesavento, Dr. Benjamin P. Owens Family Foundation of the Hibbing Foundation in the amount of $2,000 in support of the Hibbing Public Library 2022 Yuletide Festival for purchase of the books uh, for the book giveaway. And as you'll remember, you um, are all invited tomorrow night. It was passed at um, a couple meetings ago. Um, tomorrow night is the Yuletide Festival at the library, and we couldn't do this without this grant, so we really appreciate it. Okay. And just letting you know that all um, all of these will have thank you notes sent to them. Yeah. Wish of the council. Motion approved. Motion by Councillor Harkonnen. Support. Support by Councillor Whitney. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. With one abstain. <laughs> From Councillor Hoffman Sackley. Thank you. Yeah. Motion carried. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Candy. Yep, thank you. Oh. Uh, Next up, City Clerk Treasurer, Mrs. Mulder. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Item A is to approve the new transit hours of operation. We talked about this at a recent workshop meeting, that currently our transit system has had to turn people away during some of the busiest times of the day, when the people are going to and from work and when they're going to medical appointments. We would like to take some of the hours from the slower times in our service plan on the late afternoon Fridays and on the weekends and use those hours during the week. Um, the total number of service hours would remain the same. The difference would be now Monday through Thursday, the service would be from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., and then Saturday and Sunday would be 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So I'm asking for council approval to, to change the hours for Hidden Area Transit Service Plan. Okay. Wish of the council. Motion approved. Motion by Councilor Schreiber. Support. Support by Councilor Faso. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Item B. Thanks, Mayor. Item B, I'm offering resolution number 22-12-08. This would be accepting the transfer of a used 2012 Ford F-550 Goshen bus from Arrowhead Transit. Um, we also talked about this at our last workshop meeting, that our buses and our fleet are getting extremely aged, um, and the next bus that we ordered won't be here for another 18 to 24 months. 
So we're looking to take this bus from Arrowhead Transit, add it to our fleet. They're not gonna charge us anything to do the transfer. Um, we did have our public works department and our mechanics. They went over there, looked at the buses. They had two in their fleet they offered us. One of them is in much better condition than the other one. So this is the one that they had recommended that we take from Arrowhead and add to our existing fleet. I'm asking if council will approve resolution 22-12-08 to accept the transfer of this used bus. Okay, which of the council? Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve. A motion by Councilor hoffman Sockerman. Support. Support from Councilor Harkonnen. Any discussion? Yes, I would just like to add um, a, a huge thank you to Arrowhead Transit for doing this. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Thanks, Sheena. Thank you. Next up, uh, item six, city administrator, Mr. Przinski, item A. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, city council. So I bring to you this evening something that we've talked about for several months now, um, specifically uh, sh changing and shifting uh, titles and job duties around our city clerk and senior executive assistant. Um, so as we have workshopped this and kind of talked about the different duties and responsibilities, um, it's, it, what I would like to be able to do is get back to more of a traditional finance director and city clerk type of role, which means there's going to need, or we're going to need an or ordinance change, which we'll um, do at the next meeting. Um, so no action will be taken tonight, but I kind of wanted to close the loop with the city council, um, make sure I share this with our, with our residents, kind of what's going on and why we're doing what we're doing. So I think the best way to describe it is I would like to have our um, treasurer um, be focused more on the financial position of the city. I mean, we heard a lot of comments about um, budgets and levies and whatnot. So I really want that focus to be um, in Sheena's hands along with her team. And then I would like to shift some of those city clerk duties that Sheena is currently responsible for to our senior executive assist assistant, um, rename that uh, city clerk, deputy clerk, uh, deputy administrator. Um, the treasurer would now be the city treasurer slash um, finance director. Again, trying to shift our focus. Um, I think there's some efficiencies that we can gain there. Um, we have some duties, responsibilities uh, that are just kind of out there, but hasn't been assigned to anybody. I point to IT as kind of the easiest one. It's a very important uh, function. It's a tool that we use across the entire organization in all of our departments. It's really not been assigned to somebody. So my plan would be to assign that to our city clerk, deputy, et cetera. So um, I know we've talked about it at length. Um, Andy can maybe answer the technical questions about how we kind of get there. But um, I wanted to close that loop, be able to answer some questions, give you a little chance to think about it between now and the 21st when we take action on it. So with that, I'll just pose, anybody want to ask a question or anybody's in pretty Everybody comfortable okay with what with we're doing? Um, I, 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 we do, I'm sorry, no, we do yeah. have um, job descriptions in a final draft. I'll send those out on a, under a separate cover so everybody has those ahead of time. You can just kind of take a look at them and, you know, just get a feel for what we're, what we're talking about doing, so. And that'll be brought up in the next meeting. Correct. Okay. Um, question. Close. All I was going to say is, uh, thank you, Mayor. Is um, thank you, City Administrator. Um, at looking at this and, and hoping to streamline the duties and that type of a thing, so that our departments can work more efficiently and and everything. So that's really great. Thank you. Okay. Doing that. I think we've been covering this for, mm -hmm. like you said, several months. Yeah. So I'll bring it to the council next meeting, and we'll take action on it okay thanks greg mm -hmm. uh, oh so, i'm sorry before you go ahead then i would like to pass this out tonight and i'll explain the timing as to why so mm -hmm. if you pass that to councillor harkin if you take one and go down mm -hmm. so with regard to the ordinance changes that greg uh just referenced so if we are changing an ordinance i'm showing you a draft of a change to our ordinance with regard to how it describes city clerk and you'll see the I think if you look at it, it gets 1.03. If you look at it right now, it says, uh, if any reference in the ordinance is to city clerk or city clerk treasurer or city treasurer are all one and the same person. So we have to 
split those two apart. So this is a somewhat of a no-brainer, essentially, to recognize city clerk will be one person, city treasurer will be somebody else. That's really all that ordinance does. As to the other information that Greg talked about, the, the nuances, by statute, the city clerk has a number of duties. They just are. And so if you're going to delegate any of those duties from the city clerk to somebody else, then you have to have an ordinance to say that. So the second one I'm passing out is, and Angela helped with this a lot, and so did Sheena and Candy, but this is an ordinance where some of the duties that would be the city clerk, so if Candy in her position became the city clerk, we would delegate away from Candy because they're money oriented, transactional information, delegate them to the finance director slash city treasurer. So that's what this second ordinance looks like. The reason I'd like you to pass it out tonight, you're not approving it tonight, but if you guys see some language that you're concerned about between in the next few days, we need to, we don't need to publish it, but we do need to post the ordinance by Saturday, essentially, because we have to take it up 10 days, post it 10 days before we'd approve it on the 21st, which is why I wanted to get it to you tonight. So if, you have, so if anybody, when you look over this, if you have any changes you're saying, get a hold of Greg or Andy or someone so Thank you. they can address that concerns by Saturday. So. so then if I understand this correctly, Andy, the job description basically is in the new ordinance then? I think the job description is something slightly different. Different? Okay. Th this is, by, different. Th this okay. is strictly by statute okay. that we have to do this. So I, I'm, I'm on the... The highbrow, they're the, the meat and okay. potatoes. They have the dirty details as to what Candy or Sheena would be doing. But mine is to make sure that we're in compliance. There will need to be a more thorough go through anywhere throughout all of our ordinances. It makes reference to these. I just wanted to at okay. least to get this in place to the designation between well, in the future, if you approve it, have a treasurer and we'll have a clerk, two separate people. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Andy or Greg? Okay, thanks Andy. Thanks, uh, thanks Greg. I, uh, item B, I guess, if you have a, a re anything for a report. Uh, so, Mayor, City Council, I was going to talk a little bit about the um, Hibian Area Transit. Sheena covered that, so um, nothing else from my office. Okay, thank you, Greg. <clears throat> Okay, next up, bids and quotes, item one, under city engineer, uh, Mr. Story, item A. Uh, Mayor Council, attached are quotes for a digester recirculation pump at our treatment plant. Um, this pump has been rebuilt four different times, according to Mr. Hurd, and it is time for a replacement. Um, it's too far gone for a rebuild. The low <laughs> quote was from uh, General Repair Service in the amount of $11,594, and I'm asking for council approval. Okay, wish of the council. Okay, who made the first? You did, you did the first. You did the first. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you were making a motion or whatever. Okay, motion by Councillor Hart and it's supported by Councillor Schweinberger. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing that, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed same. Motion carried. Item B. <laughs> uh, Mayor Council, this year, the first time we took our new snow go, our newer snow go out, the main bearings failed. Um, when we took that apart, the, actually, we looked at the gears too, and they're pretty wore out. So we'd like to go ahead and order, actually, we already ordered because they're 10 weeks out, uh, the new bearings and the new gearbox. Uh, the price for this is $8,165.40. Um, I'm asking for council approval. This is uh, very important. We do have a backup snow goal, um, but it'd be really nice to get this thing up and running. Okay. Wish of the council. Motion to approve. Motion by Councilor Hoffman. <laughs> I'm not even looking over there, Councilor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do we have a second? <laughs> I'll, I'll second it. <laughs> Support by Councilor Bayless. Any discussion? <laughs> Hey, Councilor. Jess, how old is this thing? I believe this one's a 2015. Right, what, do, what do we figure for a lifespan on something like that? We should get 12 to 15 years out of it. Okay. Is, is, this, is this common to have to replace the big snowboard? Oh, okay. yeah, what's that? Is this common to have gearbox issues? This is the first time we replaced it okay. on this one. So, and we use, we use this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 
Excuse. Answer your question, mm -hmm. Councilor. Okay. okay. One more. Just simple. I'm sure there's nothing against you or how it's done, um, but do, do we do we do do we do inspections prior? You know, like maybe off season inspections, like do a tear down and kind of evaluate it. So if we did need it come winter time, you know, if the other one something happened to it. Yeah. Uh, Councilor, what we do is before we uh, when we put it away in the spring, we do an inspection on both of them. And then when we, before we pull them out, it's like in August, we do an inspection on both of them. It's just, this is to get this uh, bearing out of there, the whole front shoot has to come out and the whole main drive shaft, shaft has to come out. So that's not something that we do for an inspection for uh, like a pre-trip inspection on the machine. Sounds good. Okay, answer your question, Councilor. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? If hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to the same. Motion carried. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. Okay, next up, item two, City Service Director, Mr. Arola, item A. Uh, Mayor Council, in your packet is uh, looking for approval for payments to uh, commercial refrigeration systems in the amount of 9325 This was uh, a breakdown we had at the Memorial Building on the uh, condenser motor, on the, on the condenser fans that are on top of the uh, arena. Um, one of our motors went out right away at startup this year, and um, we went ahead with the with the fix right away, so we didn't have to, you know, get halfway through a season and then try and, and find it. They had one on hand in Virginia, so we got that process going right away, and uh, I believe Greg sent out a memo to you guys on that um, right when we did it, but. We would look uh, to issue payment to commercial refrigeration for this and um, move forward with that. Okay, wishes of council. Motion to approve. Motion by Councilor Bayless. Support. Support by Councilor Faso. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Uh, next up, item three, under Community Development Director, uh, Greg, take you, yes, you're taking that one. Too. Yes, Mr. Mayor, City Council. So um, as we are wrapping up 2022, moving into 2023, um, we noticed that we're not a member of the Iron Mining Association, which we as staff think we should be. Um, this evening, we asked for an approval um, to become a member, a member of the IMA. Um, the amount is $300. We know that's a, a smaller amount, but we want to make sure the city council is on the same page with staff as far as um, being a member. We think, it, we think it's important to send the message that we support the, the association, so. Okay. Wish of the council. Motion approved. Motion by Councilor Harkonnen. Support. Support by Councilor Hoffman Sockerman. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Thanks, Greg. Next up, item four, under senior, senior executive assistant, Mrs. Seppala, item A. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, before you, I have um, an RCA for some switches and Wi-Fi and labor for, um, for Integris. So the Council approved the new phone system a few months ago, and CTC has been having some trouble connecting, getting, making sure that our infrastructure is, um, it's gonna be able to support it. So because the switches are so old, some of them are 10 to 18 years old, which we're so fortunate that they've lasted this long because they can just drop on a dime. Um, but so we've been um, discussing with CTC and Integris together. Um, this will increase the overall security of our network and this will include the installation of all the switches, firewall, and the Wi-Fi at the locations, along with a monthly fee to manage it. In order to implement our new phone system, um, we'll have to upgrade the switches at our location, or our locations, because there are multiple, there are six. Um, we'll need to um, just make sure that these are updated for our new phone system. Um, I received a quote from our IT support Integris um, for services, provisioning and labor for $6,500. It's a one-time fee, along with a monthly recurring charge for 36 months in the amount of $1,458. So I'm wondering if you would approve that so we can move forward with our phone system. Okay. It wouldn't work without it, so. 
just kind of old, old technology. Wishes of the council. Motion by Councillor Schreiberger. Support. Support by Councillor Bayless. Any discussion? I have a question here. That this is we're approving the quote. Are we going to be? Is there going to be a contract then for 36 months or anything like that that we'll need to approve? Yes, at once a later time. This, Councilor Hoffman Sackerman. Once this is approved, then we can approve the contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Okay. Any other questions, Council Bayless? Thank you. I, I'm just curious. So, is this are we paying for any of these services already, or is this just a different arrangement, or is this brand new cost? So how this works is all of our switches are not monitored, they're not managed, which is why we're in the position that we're in. Um, in the past, we've just purchased the switches. So the switches can run, if you get an eight port, it can be $500, but they can go up to sixteen dollars to $1,800. Now with this, um, especially with what we have going on with our um, accessibility of our building, we don't want to put too much in, and this is a really um, inexpensive way to get where we need to be right now. Our regular, our phone system right now, the fire department last week was out two days, um, which it's just, you know, they redo um, with 911 and stuff like that, but we just don't want that happening. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, kind of, I, I just, just want to clarify that, mm -hmm. that we're just paying 1458 for the ongoing services for the, the switches themselves, the security on them? Yep, so and maintenance, right? we're actually like leasing them for Perfect. 36 months. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Answer yeah. your question, Carl? Yep, sir. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Thanks, Candy. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have license and permits. Item one, approve the raffle permit application request of the Hibbing Little League, Inc. to hold a raffle at the minute. Minnesota North College on Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. Wish of the council. Motion approved. Motion by Councilor Harkonnen. Support. Support by Councilor Hoffman Sackerman. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Item two, approve the special event permit application of the City of Hibbing to hold the Hibbing on Howard Winter Edition on Sundays in January 2023. Wish of the council. Motion to approve. Motion by Councillor Faso. Support. Support by Councillor Bayless. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carry. Item number well, two again, but it should be three, but that's all right. <laughs> two A. Two A. Approve the raffle <laughs> permit application request of the Hibbing Curling Club to hold a raffle on Saturday, April 15th, 2023, at the Hibbing Curling Club. Wish of the Council. Motion approved. Motion by Councillor Schreiberger. Support. Support by Councillor Faso. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Item three, approve the raffle permit application request of the Algonquin Youth Activities Association to hold their raffle on Tuesday, April 11th, 2023 at the Algonquin Club. Wish of the Council. Motion approved. Motion by Councillor Harkonnen. Support. Support by no. Councillor Whitney. <laughs> any, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Item four, approve the raffle permit application request of the Hibbing Elks Lodge, number 1022, to hold a raffle at the Hibbing Elks Lodge on Saturday, April 22nd, 2023. Wish of the council. Motion to approve. Motion by Councillor Hoffman Sockerman. Support. Support by Councillor Bayless. <laughs> any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Item five, approve the raffle permit application request of the Hibbing Elks Lodge, 1022, to hold bingo at the Hibbing Elks Lodge on Sunday, January 15th, 2023. Wishes of the council. Motion to uh, approve. We got a motion by Councilor Shriver, support by Councilor Faso. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. We'll need a motion and a second for adjournment. So moved. Motion by Councilor Harkonnen. <coughs> Support. Support by Councilor Bayless. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, meeting adjourned.